We're going to be moving on. Moving on. Now, this wall is up here for a while, so that can still happen. Oh, I love when that happens. All right. <clears throat> we have two more people here for going to tell us about their art and, so, and work and so forth. I'm going to have Jeannie Hay Sternbeck come up here and tell us about these beautiful crystals that you see over here. And But everyone has to sit down, please, and stop talking. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeannie Hay Sternbeck. here are the creations of me and my friend Jessica. We both work with crystals and make healing crystal jewelry and also work with these grids. Crystal grids or altars are arrangements of stones with a particular intention. So Jessica made three different grids for health, manifestation, and protection. So using specific crystals with different qualities that combine to help you achieve those particular intentions. And my grid is a grid for earth healing, so I will read the qualities of the stones that I used and the messages from those stones at the end of my talk. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what brought me to working with crystals. I was lucky enough to grow up on this amazing island with parents who loved the natural world. So we went on walks, on the beaches, in the woods, during all the seasons of the year, and I became very connected to nature. Well, we're all born that way, but I remained connected to nature. I've always felt very much at home with my bare feet on the earth, or swimming in the ocean, or sitting quietly and just listening in the woods. I became a body worker because my hands hummed when I was out in nature particularly, and it felt like there was a healing vibration and a healing energy that wanted to move through me. So I've been doing that for 15 years. And then the crystals found me, and I work with them intuitively, and they found me in an intuitive way. Probably about 10 years ago, I began to have a vision of a piece of amethyst, an amethyst cathedral, which is sort of a cave-shaped thing. We have a very small one on the table here. And I began to see it in my mind's eye. It would just pop up, sometimes during body work sessions, sometimes during other times. And I somehow knew that I wasn't supposed to go looking for it. We would just meet each other at some point. And maybe four years ago, I was at a friend's gathering. It was an art show. And there was someone there who I had met before and had no idea that he was into crystals, and he was selling them. And there was the amethyst that I had been seeing in my mind's eye for about six years. So it was really wonderful to meet her. <laughs> I introduced myself. I said, I'm going to take you home. <laughs> and I spoke with him, and he taught me about some other crystals that were there, rose quartz and clear quartz. So I began working with that trio of crystals. And for a body worker, that's a really great combination. Amethyst, in particular, is the master pain reliever. It draws physical, emotional, and mental pain out of you. You can actually place it on your body if you have a stomach ache, and it will help draw the pain out. It's also a really amazing stone for working with addiction. And I love the idea. I recently read a new definition of that. We often think of addiction as specifically substances. But this idea is that you know an addiction is anything, an addictive behavior is any kind of behavior that you run to when you're moving away from an uncomfortable feeling that you don't really know how to be with. And amethyst is very calming and it helps you to access your inner fortitude so that you can stay with the uncomfortable feeling and not feel like you need to run away, which is just the most beautiful image to me of healing addiction, that you can stay within yourself and not have to run. So I began to use crystals in my bodywork practice and noticed that I felt 
really beautifully supported. I felt less drained at the end of sessions. My clients noticed that there was just a, a certain energy, a certain boost that we both received from it. So then I started carrying crystals in my pockets all the time. And then it seemed a logical, reasonable thing to start making jewelry because it's easier to wear something as a bracelet or a necklace than have a bunch of rocks in your pockets. And then, of course, friends started seeing it and asking me to make jewelry. And I've been doing that for the last few years. And my favorite pieces that I've worked on, and, and through the years, people have become to know me as a crystal lady, because I talk about it a lot, and I share my passion. And so they come to me with specific things that they're working with. Someone will say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this, or I would like support with this. What crystals do you recommend? And then I'll make them a custom bracelet, necklace, whatever it is. And now I'm finding that the rocks have been talking to me and telling me that they want to guide me in a new direction. I've been working with altars and grids for a long time, ever since I was a child, making designs on the beach with sticks and stones and feathers. And throughout my work with the crystals, my bodywork practice, I'm also a yoga teacher, and in all of these I'm guided by my intuition. I, it's clear that the aim is to be a conduit for this energy to come through. So that for my clients, their energy can come through me and be grounded and cleansed. And then also whatever healing energy there is, the universal healing energy can move through me and into them. So when I'm working with someone, I'm not depleting myself. I'm drawing on this universal source. The crystals naturally support that because their energy can move through me as a conduit and be shared with the people that I'm working with. So it's always energetic work. And now I've been moving into making grids and altars, custom pieces for people. So I asked them those two questions that people tended to come to me with. So I asked someone, what are you struggling with and what would you like support with? And then I sit and I meditate and I allow the crystals that want to work with them to kind of float up into my consciousness. And then I'll pull out my slab of wood or my sacred geometry grid. And I place the crystals wherever I feel. Sometimes I move them around. This particular grid that I made for earth healing it was fascinating because usually I put the stones down and they just stay there. I don't do a lot of rearranging. But that one, that one got rearranged. It, it knew what it wanted in some big ways. But then there were other stones that said maybe. And then it was like, no, not quite. This one instead. And I just love the process. It's, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that this is both a collaboration between Jessica and I and our love of the stones and then also a collaboration that we each have with the crystals that we work with, which is very amazing. They're, they're living beings. And something that I love about them is they're both some of the densest matter on the planet, but then the most high vibration. So it's this union of opposites, which, of course, we as human beings also have. You know, We have these polarities of our personalities. And the stones help us and support us in coming back into balance. So I'm very grateful to be here, to be invited to be a part of this. And so grateful for Jessica. It's really amazing to have someone else that has the same appreciation and connection with the stones. And she, is, she makes the most amazing jewelry. I adore her jewelry. So it feels very wonderful for me to step back from making jewelry and know that I can guide people to hers if they want a physical thing to wear, to have with them. So I'm going to read the the description of my grid. As I've been making more and more of the grids, the stones have also been talking to me in a different way. When I work with people I, and make jewelry for them, I often give them cards that explains the healing properties of the crystals that are used in their jewelry. And now that I've been making the grids, the stones have been not just talking to me about their properties, but actually giving me messages. And that's what happened with this grid. So this is a grid for earth healing. Chrysocolla helps us communicate with the energies of the earth and understand what is required for the earth to heal. It purifies the environment and transmits energy for rebuilding relationships. It reminds us of the power of silence. Let us listen deeply to the song of the earth. Let us receive her freely offered love, wisdom, and support. 
Let us be brave in doing the work of seeing clearly, loving fully, and offering healing to what is hurt within ourselves and in our world. Black tourmaline awakens the qualities of altruism and enhances practicality in creativity. It activates grounding between the first chakra and the center of the earth. Let us remember we are a part of the great web of life. Let us care for ourselves and each other. Lapis lazuli heals chronic wounds, physical, mental, and emotional, and unites and balances the energies of yin and yang, masculine and feminine. Let us offer deep healing to ourselves and the planet. Let us find balance between rest and action, offering and receiving. Emerald activates the heart chakra and encourages sensitivity and loyalty within us. It combines intelligence with discernment, allowing for the most beneficial option to appear as the clear choice. Let us feel into the heart of our connection to all of life and let this knowing guide us in using the gifts of our intelligence for the benefits of all being. Jasper is known as the supreme nurturer. It reminds us that we are not here on this physical plane just for our own benefit, but also to bring joy and care to others, uniting us all in love. Let us remember our oneness and do all things for the greater good of all. Let us offer gratitude, care, and devotion to the earth and all of her creatures, including ourselves. So Jessica and I both have our cards here. And as I said, she makes really amazing jewelry. I still do some custom pieces, but I'm moving towards making the altars and grids. I have my cards as well. And Jessica <clears throat> has grids for sale in the shop. So you can get her sacred geometry pieces and the crystals to put on top of them if you want to take them home and make your own grids, which is very amazing to put in your own special altar place. And then the way mine work is that you contact me and I ask you those questions. I create a personal grid or altar for you, and then I send you an image of it. So you can print it out, put it in a sacred space, carry it in your wallet. Often it's very useful to use it as your cell phone lock screen or your computer desktop background so you see it repeatedly and you're constantly reminded that these crystals healing energy is supporting you. And we have a small bowl of ocean jasper over here along with some cards that have instructions of how to cleanse crystals. So almost all of us, especially if we're women, have crystals of some sort, gemstone jewelry. and. I know a lot of people on this island are very connected to nature and probably have sacred stones as well. So please feel free to take an ocean jasper stone and a card so that you can see how to cleanse your own jewelry and gemstones. And thank you so much for inviting us to be part of this. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, if anyone has any questions. Can you explain what a grid is? So a grid is an arrangement of crystals often on a sacred geometry shape which is Jessica actually made these grids herself. She designed the um, she designed the design that's on them and then had them laser printed and cut. And then you arrange the crystals, you choose certain crystals that work together in, in certain ways. You know, there are, there are stones that have particular relationships and when you combine them, they magnify their energy. Sometimes, but it doesn't have to be. It's, for instance, sometimes I use sacred geometry grids, and then sometimes I just, you know, do it free form on a, like mine is on a piece of wood. So it can be based on sacred geometry. I work more intuitively, so it's not, you know, so, so specific. But there are many people that work very specifically with grids. You know, you can you can Google crystal grids and get a lot of different instructions on combinations of crystals and exactly how to lay them for very particular purposes. So they call yes, and then you know it's like they they center the energy and then send it forth for you to be supported with. And also, Jessica has very we have two of them over here, very tiny grids that have a single crystal on them. And so the part of the sacred geometry and just the 
intentional sacred space that a grid creates is a great place to cleanse and recharge you know any single crystal or group of crystals so not not only do the grids combine and then create a healing energy but you can actually take any of your stones and place it on one of the grids and then it will be cleansed and charged and ready to be reused because crystals do get tired there are certain stones that don't need to be cleansed but most of the stones as you can imagine you know they're transmitting energy, they're offering energy, they're receiving energy from us, so they get a little bit, yeah, they get tired, they need to rest. Um, I've personally always been someone who took off all my jewelry at night. I don't like to sleep in my jewelry, and I think that's just a natural desire to want to cleanse it at night. But there's also really beautiful ways to cleanse things, which I prefer to put them out under the full moon or the new moon. That's a really beautiful way to do it return them to nature, put them in a house plant, or put them under a tree outside. Right now, Jessica just came back from the Tucson Gem Show, and she brought me, part of our collaboration is working together this way, she brought me back a whole bunch of crystal spheres that I will use in my bodywork practice with people. And I love it because I had given her a list of certain crystals that I was hoping for, and she completely went off the list <laughs> because her intuition guided her to these other stones. And, and when I saw them, when I went over and gathered them and met them, I knew that, of course, you know, these were the ones I was meant to work with. Some of them I've, I've, you know, one of them I'd never even heard of before, but I'll research it and I'll learn to work with it and I'm sure, you know, amazing things will come. So it's this very beautiful appreciation and communication and connection that we both have with the stones. You know, who knows what that is? We all have our different things that inspire us, and for whatever reason, we both talk to rocks, and they talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? What are some, I'm just, I'm not making fun, I just really want to know, what are some interesting things that rocks have communicated? Have communicated? Yeah. For me, I learned to talk to them using them through body work. So, you know, I have them in my body work room, and when I'm giving someone a massage, the amethyst will say, like, put me, you know, I, I have a lot of crystals at this point, so maybe five particular pieces of amethyst will say, put me in a line under the table stretching from this person's hip to their knee. Or maybe put me on the table on top of their body, you know, in that, in that space. And sometimes, you know, it'll be because they've talked to me and said that they're having an issue. But often, it's, often I won't know. I, I do talk to my clients, of course, and, you know, a lot of people, I know what's happening with their bodies, but... Often what I found when I started working with them is they would talk to me about being put in a certain place that we hadn't talked about, and then the person would tell me that they had an injury there or something going on. So it's not that they speak exactly in the same words that we humans use, but it's more an energetic thing where they would say, like, put me here, I want to work in this particular way. And that's when I make custom jewelry for people or altars. It's the same, the same thing when I sit with that that person's things that they want support with. The stones will just sort of bubble up. You know, I had this idea, the, the inspiration for my grid was the huge piece in the middle, which is Chrysocolla. That stone said, I'm going to be the centerpiece of your grid, and it's going to be a grid for earth healing. So then I was like, all right, who else wants to be in this grid? And this big chunk of black tourmaline that I, that I had said, all right, I want to be in the grid. And then this piece of lapis lazuli was like, I want to be a, the grid. You know, so it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's not, it's, it's more of an intuitive, emotional sort of something without words where they kind of just talk to me, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think it's sort of the same way with a painter. You know, you don't, it's not always super mental, you know, what's inspiring you to like put that shape there or that color there. It's just something inside of you that makes you want to do it. And it can't necessarily be put into words or explained really clearly. But I go with it because it feels really good. <laughs> All right. Is it possible for crystals to have a natural negative energy or can certain crystals not work together or compete in some way? Or that, you know, I've never, I've never found... Maybe I've just found my way to crystals that wanted to work together because of the work that I do. You know, it's like the stones that I'm drawn to are going to be ones that work together because that's the whole point. You know, we're working for the healing of the people that I'm working with and 
through that, you know, my idea is that we heal ourselves. As we heal ourselves, that healing energy heals the planet. So, you know, we're all working for the benefit of the greater good. But there are certainly, I've held certain stones that are like way too intense. You know, there are certain stones that they say like, it's not great to even hold them or it depends on the person, you know, maybe someone can hold them. But like I, I held a piece of a, a piece of a meteor. <laughs> and when I, they didn't, the person who had it was, we were talking all about crystals and she knew I had an affinity for them. So she said, she didn't tell me what it was. She just handed it to me and said, tell me how you feel. And I felt like I, like my energy sort of went through the floor and was sinking. <laughs> it was, it was, and I had to hand it back to her because it didn't feel, you know, it didn't really feel safe because it was like, whoa, I, I need to stay in my body. But that stone was, it, it's a super, super, super dense meteor. And it, apparently that energy like draws you to the center of the planet. So that's, you know, that's something I would not use in body work. Maybe for someone who was like way out of their body, you know, and needed to be super grounded, but that's even, that's too much. <laughs> that's probably too much grounding. And they, like, for instance, lead is actually a gemstone. It's in my gemstone book, you know, but you're not going to like hold lead. <laughs> that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be particularly healthy or, or good, but it does have beneficial qualities. So that sort of answers it. All right. Thank you, everyone. So the cards are up here. Um, next, we have a very talented young musician named Nate D'Angelo, who also has some CDs here. So please buy one. And again, after he has done and we're you know milling about and so forth, you can still come up to this wall. And please check out the gems and the crystals and so forth. And so we're going to get Nate set up and then we'll move on.